Here we are back in the forest. <laughs> Currently just wandering around looking for a place to paint and have some snacks. Um, just getting lost, enjoying the beautiful weather and the sunlight and the sounds of the forest. <laughs> For today's session, I was really excited to use my palette knife with some impasto medium and work very loose and uh, expressive. Back in the day, 2015-16, when I was first learning how to paint with acrylic paint on big canvases, I pretty much only used a palette knife, and I really missed that freedom. So I decided today, no matter what happens, I'll at least try the palette knife. It was a very interesting experience with oil, um, and I can't wait to do more of it. It was so much fun. Okay, we found a little place to hang out for a while. I'm actually going to be painting this tree over here, and sometimes I just wander until I find something that inspires me and uh, with no real plan in mind, and oftentimes I'm drawn to light However, th in this case, I'm more drawn to the texture of the tree and the variety um, of color that's happening. So we have the bright green moss on the white, um, the light gray bark. And then off up to the left, there is like a dark sepia orangish tone um, branch coming out along with some other branches. So it's just really cool. And I thought doing a little close up would be fun. I'm gonna be using my palette knife and some impasto, liquid impasto uh, gel. Actually, no, it's liquid impasto medium. Um, but we're gonna, I'm gonna first lay down some base colors. So I have my paper towels, my palette knife, and my brushes. figure out where to put my paper towels. Okay. Um, my brush holder. It's going to hang off to the right side. Um, I forgot about what I was doing last time. Last time I had my palette set up um, and this was able to slide over this edge and then I was able to put it back in the Pashad box. Uh, but this time I have paint all along that side and so I can't add anything to it. So I need to leave a little space down here for the mediums. My fast drying medium and my linseed oil are in here. So, oh well, lesson learned. <laughs> Be very careful not to tip this over. Be a disaster. <laughs> it's not bad. So to start off, I'm gonna lay in some background colors, which there are lots of browns and oranges and greens happening back there and gray. So I'm going to keep it kind of loose and, and just have fun with color. I'm going to be a little more um, stylized with color in this piece. So dipping it in my medium, my fast drying and my linseed oil, just a little bit of each. And I'm going to grab some Burnt sienna, raw sienna, which gives me like a big orange, brownish orange tone. Raw umber as well to ten tone it down a little. Um, but I'm just going to do like a really quick sketch first. So I know where my main tree is going to be. Actually, I think I want it to be a little more to the right. So this is 
ignore that. <laughs> this will also help me to establish the scale of the tree and the painting. Um, branches coming up here. Cool twisting branches. Um, and there's going to be some bigger trees in the background. Uh, and I'm not going to paint all the trees that are in the background because there's so many. This forest is pretty dense. Um, and I don't want it to be too distracting, but uh, yeah, there we go. Um, so I'm going to add some titanium white. Just taking what I already have on the palette, which isn't much, and I'm going to lay in the brighter tones in the painting making made kind of a warm beige tone on the with this and this will help me remember where my brights are going to be so i'm kind of starting off with a value painting very loosely The only white I see when I squint my eyes is actually in the background of the clouds coming through the trees. So, um, yeah, it's a little, it's, it's pretty overcast at the moment, um, but it's shifting back and forth constantly all, all day. So I'm sure we'll see the sun again. Um, but overall it's tense as I've been like squinting, uh, since I sat down. Uh, I can definitely see some brightness coming through the trees behind, so I'll use some titanium white. It's still not pure white because I'm mixing in a little bit of that leftover brown. Uh, and I will create some light bluish, grayish brown tones to capture some of that sky coming through, and then I will paint on top of them. My plan is to do some impasto, liquid impasto today, so we're going to have fun with texture in this piece. This, this forest that we're in kind of looks out over... Which firth is this? The Moray Firth, um, which is a big body of water, and Inverness is on the other side. So, we're kind of on a little cliff face, sort of. Not quite cliff, but you know, uh, add a little more blue because there are clouds and they're peeking through, but this is just really quick to lie in some of the brightness in the background and I'm going to come back over and work, ar work over that and that's going to remain my brightest value. There are some actual blue sky patches coming through. So I'm gonna make sure I capture a little of that. Uh, and then since my primer was blue, well, it's like a cornflower blue that I primed it with. Uh, it's actually some gesso mixed with acrylic. Uh, that is able to peek through a little bit and give me the rest of the sky tones that I need. So I can be pretty conservative with paint at this point. I don't have to lay too much on it to get what I need. And then And work forward.
Oh, but yeah, I was saying we're on like a little cliff. The forest is... Oh, hey, what you doing over there? <laughs> uh, the forest is on the edge of, of that water, so when we look down into the horizon, we can see some water and sky in the distance. And Inverness is down there too. You guys won't see it in the GoPro. And I'm definitely not going to be able to paint that in because it's just way too far away to really make sense in this painting. So for now, we're just getting in some of the sky tones. And there's a little bit of some darkness by the horizon, so I'll lay that in as well. Man, my brush is like shedding. What's up with that brush? So I'm going to paint really, really loose horizon in case we end up being able to see it through the trees, which it's unlikely, but you never know, just in case. But there are some bright green trees kind of blocking the view down into the water. So I'm going to do the tops of those trees. Wow, seriously, there's like four strands coming off the end there right now. <laughs> Man, I'm like leaning forward. I'm sitting on a stump, leaning forward because it's kind of hard to set up the easel next to the, I mean the uh, tripod, right next to the stump. So it's a little bit further away than I would prefer. Um, honestly, I should just be standing. <laughs> but after hiking for a while, I was really keen on sitting down. So here we are. <laughs> However, I need to find a better, more comfortable position. I guess I don't have to lean so far forward. I can just let the brush get a little bit further away, which is actually nice because I can sit further away from the painting and see it um, a little bit better. Okay. So just for this background. I'm doing it with the brush still. Um, as I said, I am going to come back in with my palette knife and some liquid impasto. I'm using a pretty big brush right now. It's a number six bright um, and, you know, compared to my thumb, it has a pretty big, big set of bristles. So I'm just doing some teeny tiny background trees right now, just to get some variety. This is a really peaceful spot. I love it. Sometimes the places I want to stop are just way too windy. <laughs> um, it's a beautiful view and I'm like, oh, I really want to paint that. But I know I would just either freeze or like something, the wind would blow my stuff around. <laughs> but yeah. This is a really nice spot. So I'm gonna do some grayish green in the background because like I said, those 
Pine trees are kind of off the edge of the cliff. I'm just kind of dabbing the canvas lightly. Oops, sorry, I bumped the camera. Just very lightly, just because I want to do a little detail, but just enough so you understand these are trees in the distance. But again, it's going to be, these are the supporting characters. These are going to be off in the distance and I won't notice them that much. paint isn't fully mixed uh, together so I have some like pockets of color throughout the brush and as I do this it kind of blends together as I'm touching the canvas which is really nice because then I get a really good variety placement of color. This is a very pastel, pastel toned piece at the moment, which is okay. It's good. Just a tiny bit of of sun hitting the trees back there. So I'm adding a little more yellow. So, okay, now. Gonna get some more shadowy tones and start painting in some of the foreground. Trees. and some of the grasses and ferns and such. I guess this area has a lot of ferns that have not quite come back after winter. So I'm just gonna dust that surface with some thin down burnt Umber, a little bit of raw sienna in there too. <laughs> Are they coming out this time? Yeah. <laughs> Yay, auto mode. It is kind of annoying. It doesn't do what I want it to do. Well, it's because it's not in manual. Just haven't learned yet, but you will. Hmm? You haven't learned yet, but you will. Okay, so this is just to get something down. Let me just add a little more. There we go, that was a little too much back there. Okay. Bringing some greens and purples in and making a nice, like, colorful, shadowy color. Sh colorful color? Yeah, good job.
Sorry, I just hit the GoPro with my brush. <laughs> sketching as I go because I am going to use a palette knife on some of these things, uh, some of these elements and so I know I want to sketch in just a couple of the closer trees in case I don't like it, it won't have when I do the palette It's a prime lens, so you have to move. You can't zoom. Your body is the zoom. It's a 50 millimeter lens. It's not the wide lens. <laughs> it's the wide lens that I usually have on it. Um, it's 35 millimeter, so you can be closer to something and it feels like you still are far away. Yeah, okay, I like this. We'll go with that. Seems pretty good. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and mix up some impasto medium. liquid impasto. It has a really interesting peach color in the sun with orange highlights. <laughs> So I'm going to take some browns and get that going. Creating really rich reddish brown tones. And I'm also going to have a, have some that are more raw uh, burnt umber. Tiny bit of white. variety of textures on this forest floor. Now I'm trying to remember, I told myself I would be more brave with color. And I mean, just have fun with it. So don't want to be precious. a mixture of like browns and greens back there. Sorry, I keep bumping the tripod with the camera on it. <laughs> All right, I'm at a like really awkward angle where I don't want to hit the GoPro, but I have to work over here, so 
Hopefully I don't bump you guys too much. I think I'll leave some of this blue showing through in the foreground. It's kind of fun. But I don't really know how else to do this on the bottom without taking it out of my pochade box. <laughs> so here we are. I'm going to actually use this blue as kind of the shadow, which will be very stylized. Um, I mean, it, it's only going to show through a little, but... I'm just using really, really thin layers, and I'm kind of like scraping it across the edge. Scraping it across the paper very thinly so that that texture shows through and occasionally grabbing some other tones here and there to get some variety there's like leaves and branches and dead ferns and live ferns and all sorts of variety on this forest floor so definitely want to get some and represent that I'm going to mix in some horizontal, vertical, diagonal brush strokes. I can put that back, I think. <laughs> it's probably really loud. <laughs> there is a lot, there are a lot of mossy tones in the foreground. Which I'm going to gray down a little bit. Okay, I need it again. Um... So, the tree has heavy moss hanging on it, and since I already did my lighter tones of this tree, now I can come back over it and basically just sweep my color. And fill in the shadows. The highlight of this tree, or the lighter values of this tree, are kind of that orange, um, the peachy mauve, light beige-ish tones. So I'm just kind of sweeping back and forth, left to right, to represent the bark that I can see. It has some like horizontal striations in it. And I'm going to have some heavy, vibrant moss hanging off the edge. And I keep mixing in my impasto gel as I go. And the reason impasto is really fun is because it holds its shape. So anything you put on the canvas, you're going to get a nice crisp. area of texture it doesn't it doesn't level out eventually like some do and some are made to level out and this is not <laughs> this is made to hold its shape the moss is just like dripping down the tree it's really fun
I've never used oleo and pasto gel, but I've watched a couple of videos lately. It seems kind of, might be interesting to try, but I love, I think, so oleo pasto gel is the one that levels itself out, but you still get that texture. So it's just different. So I'm actually using the texture of this, of the impasto to have some depth visible, which is fun. Interesting to see how, I mean, this should withstand my backpack. <laughs> so far it's been fine, as long as I don't jump or like move it around too much. Lighting keeps changing so much. So it's a good thing that my scene doesn't rely on bright sun. I'm gonna have to break this out again. It's really tricky to use the um, palette knife near the edges with this uh, push odd box because of the clips. So I have to like occasionally take it out to get to certain areas. grayish green tones in the background. Occasionally you guys might hear people since it is a public forest. It's okay. See if you can see some of that texture. Will be it would be more nor more noticeable if we were in full sun right now. All right, so we're gonna do some of the branches coming off. Still using my pellet knife, so I guess I don't need to hold that anymore. I'm kind of just drawing with the tip of my pellet knife.
and doing like the shadow tones and then I'm going to come back in with my bright red tone, bright brownish red with a tiny bit of orange because it has a really beautiful rusty orange color. But I don't want to like do it, overdo it, so just touching it here and there. And there's like tons of little branches that come off of that, so we may have fun with that in a little while. <laughs> but for now, there are other branches who need attention. Lots of branches hanging down as well from this one. on this tree where it leans back. And we'll probably do some more moss hanging off. I'm definitely going to need a lot of practice for uh, with the impasto, but this is really fun to play with <laughs> the textures. with some little branches. <laughs> I might need just like to get, grab my tiny brush for those. from sitting <laughs> for so long. I'm trying to work decently fast. So one reason is because it's, you know, a little chilly and we're hiking and we want to keep moving and it's nice to explore the forest in the daylight. Uh, and because, like I said, I wanted to be like more free and fun with this one and not get too precious. So have to keep that in mind. Sometimes it's easy to slow down and start getting into too much detail. So I'm just gonna add some branches coming every which way off this tree. I'm 
And there's like hundreds, but I'm not gonna draw every single one. Well, there's probably actually thousands. Is it raining? Oh, those are your shoes. <laughs> I hope. Well, it might rain. It might rain? It's up into your right. Oh gosh. I, I can't look right now. Just tell me if you notice it's starting to rain. It said no rain today. It just said partly cloudy all day, but you never know. It is Scotland. I'm like loading up the brush every now and then and otherwise I'm letting it sweep across the the paint and sometimes it picks up what's underneath the brush which is cool because it gives it a nice negative painting effect but if you want to deposit color you really do have to keep loading up because your paint obviously is wet underneath so it got a little chillier <laughs> that's for sure Maybe that's because I'm just sitting in one spot, though. No, it's because no sun training here. No sun. Yeah. Okay. So I barely brought any raw umber. And that may have been a mistake. I mean, burnt umber, my dark brown. It's kind of tricky, but we can make do. I'm gonna do a little more in the foreground. Just to keep there's actually some dark tones up here. And on top of that dark tone is a lots of ferns and branches and so we're gonna fill in some of those dark tones. And then come back in with some green sweeps of color and some light browns we want lots of like mossy textures in the foreground more saturated color too paper towel. Um, I know you can't really probably see it as well because the light isn't, the sun isn't here like shining, creating shadows on the oil paint, but it's very thick and I'm using that to create lots of texture in the foreground like branches and debris and scraping back and forth. Here and there, leaving a little bit of some bigger debris, changing direction. Sorry, I keep bumping the GoPro. <laughs> Trying not to. some grasses and stuff in the foreground. 
Yeah, the sun is coming back. But I am going to be wrapping this one up soon. This fun little impasto study. But I am going to go a little bold and get some bright moss on the right side of the tree. So, again, lifting that up because I need to be able to see. Just a couple spots with that bright yellow, um, yellowish green to kind of catch the light a little on the right side of that tree. <laughs> my paper towel has seen better days. Oh no, I just noticed it's on my, I had a lot of paint on my hand and I don't know what I've touched. The yellow seems to get everywhere. Like, I, oh, well, I definitely just put some on my coat. <laughs> but we're okay. Um, I'm gonna add a little more shadow on the left side of the tree now. I think we're just gonna call this one done in a moment and move on. See if we find anything else. If not, this still was so much fun. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Maybe just a few more sweeps of thin branches and then I think that'll do it. Yeah. I mean, like I said, there are literally hundreds hanging off this tree, <laughs> but I think we can get the point across in less. <laughs> I almost just like globbed it on there. Do a vertical. And like 17 seconds. This was so much fun. I'm 
like usually my eye is drawn to a scene because it has beautiful backlit lighting or nice shadows or something like that but again I said at the beginning of this painting I just loved the textures and the colors on this tree so why not do something a little different all right I think that'll do it yeah <laughs> Okay, now I'm done. <laughs> I have to do that. It's like ritual. After I finished painting here, we ended up going on a, another hike and just kind of exploring the forest. So I didn't end up painting after this, although I had planned to. <laughs> uh, that just seems to be the routine lately. <laughs> One painting per hike. <laughs> But I had so much fun and I'm really going to force myself to do this more often and just be um, kind of more loose and expressive with my colors and my and use of palette knife um, and the impasto technique because I know I have so much to learn, but it is so enjoyable. So if you enjoyed watching this video, please make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications to see more videos in the future as well as like the video and feel free to leave me a comment. Uh, maybe let me know if there's anything else you want to see in the future. Otherwise, I will see you guys next time. Keep painting!